If you saw last week's video, you know we ended here in Inuvik, Canada. We are only 97 or so miles from the Arctic Ocean, guys. And in this video, we are going to make it there. So you're going to want to stick around to see the town of Tuk Toyaktuk and the Arctic Ocean. And find out if we're going to take a full dip or just a toe. We'll determine that when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> The hat on my head will tell you which direction I'm leaning. It's a little bit chilly here, guys, but come on, let's go have some fun. Let's go! Hello and welcome back. If it's your first time here, I'm Scott. And I'm Allison. And we're Jarhead, Jarhead and Ginger's, Ginger's Journey. Journey. We're full-time RVers. We do destination videos, tips and tricks, and all things RV. If that sounds like something you'd like, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and come along on our journeys. Well, here's where we stayed in Inuvik. We are here at Happy Valley RV Park. A lot of the sites here have a power only. Some of them don't have any amenities at all. Um, they're fairly level for the most part. Uh, had a little bit of problem with the power at the sites, but when you're up here in the Arctic, it, you'll take what you can get, guys. They do have laundry facilities. They also have hot showers and bathhouses here. So that's uh, really awesome. And just a little bit more about the park. We used the laundry here and it was clean, but there's one washer, one do uh, dryer. It was $7 to wash, $8 to dry. That's Canadian. Um, and they worked well. The dryer actually ran for 99 minutes, but we stopped at about an hour and it was completely dry. Uh, the bathrooms are very clean. So um, we didn't use the showers there, but I peeked at them and they are clean as well. And they weren't pay showers. Most of the showers that we've ran into since we've been here in Canada are pay showers. You have to pay a loonie, which is a one Canadian dollar, uh, for a, about three minutes worth of shower time. These were, were free with your purchase of the, the park. And right across the street from the park, there's a restaurant. I think it's called Alistair's. Uh, it's a, there's a school bus, which is the kitchen, and then a little tiny um, building that seats 14 people and uh, they like to seat people together at the tables and we had a great time getting to know the people who were passing through and the lady who owns the place, Pam. And uh, Pam actually told us to put our sticker on her uh, bus. There's a few stickers on there. So we got to add our sticker on there and uh, we had an amazing meal. He had the whitefish. What did you think about that? It was really good. The whitefish was really good. I'd only had it in Door County before and now I've had it here as well. This one was fried, the one in Door County was boiled, and they were both delicious. And I had pulled pork poutine, and I'll have to say this poutine gravy was the absolute best gravy I've ever had. Here's our site here at Happy Valley RV Park in Inuvik, Canada. You can see we did splurge and paid the extra five dollars for the power there, so we do have 30 amp power. There's also a uh, 15 or 20 amp uh, breaker in there as well with a normal household outlet. They don't have any other amenities as far as uh, water or sewer dump here. There is a dump on location and they have a fire ring over here and the picnic tables here are concrete. There's one over here and for whatever reason, this site has two. So there's another uh, picnic table there and another fire ring. Um, come to think of it, now that I'm doing this video, this must be two sites, we just realized, but it only says one on the, uh, on the power pole, so that's what we got. When we pulled in here, um, we pulled all kinds of sideways because, hey, we're in the Arctic, why not, right? And uh, we got level pretty easily. The ground here doesn't look level at all, but we were able to find a pretty decent level spot and uh, so we didn't have to drop the jacks or, or do anything crazy. We just pulled in and called it level and stayed the night. This is, however, our third site we've been in. The first site that they assigned to us, the uh, branches were scraping the RV and it was uh, sloped downhill. The second site we took when we stayed the first night and um, it was also very unlevel um, and the power kept going on and off. So we d wanted to try this site. I like this site a lot more. It's bigger, more open, and we were able to get level easier. In Canada, they have gas stations they call card lock which I guess just means there's no attendant, no store or anything like that. So they're a little bit different than anything that I'm used to. This one, you had, we had to go up front of this big tank where I'm assuming they hold all the fuel. 
uh, and put your card in and tell them what pump you're on. We're on pump four, how much you want to pay and all that stuff. And then you come over here and the, um, the handle is just sticking out of this piece of uh, a metal here. And you have to, um, on this one, you have to push or pull, push to turn on or pull to turn off the pump. So instead of pushing the little button like every, like you're used to, you know, down in the U.S. or in other more populated places, this is the way you have to do it here. There was another one that uh, we found here that had a little a little um, turn on, turn handle thing on it. You had to turn it from uh, pump or to vehicle or to truck, depending on. Uh, what you wanted to do. So there's a little bit of a learning curve every time you go to get fuel up here, uh, especially in the Arctic. You never know uh, where they're going to be. You're used to looking for a gas station that looks a certain way. Well, these places definitely don't look like that at all. Um, so, yep, getting fuel is even uh, a little different up here than anywhere else I've ever seen. As you can tell by the sign behind us, guys, we finally made it to Tuk Toyuk Tuk. Between Inuvik and here was less than 100 miles, but let me tell you, that is the hardest 100 miles I have ever driven in my life. I am so happy to be here standing at this sign, and I can see town behind where you guys are. There's uh, some houses and whatnot. I can hear dogs barking. And behind us, you may be able to see under the sign there, they call them pingos. It's uh, somehow uh, a lake freezes and it makes these big giant mounds and they uh, become permafrost. So those big, huge mounds are permanently frozen uh, to the ground there. Pretty interesting and apparently you can only see them uh, up here in the Arctic. We made it to the Arctic Ocean. Now it's time to take a dip. But first we gotta find out where we can do so. We passed the visitor center, I guess, but didn't see a sign. So we have to drive back and find that and find out where exactly we can go in the ocean because some of this is their fishing lands and our fishing territory. So we can't just go in anywhere. We gotta find out where we're supposed to go. Absolutely. So uh, you've already seen some of the town. Uh, we're gonna hang out here after we dip maybe my toes in the water <laughs> and uh, we'll show you some more of this uh, of this place this is the one of the farthest north points you can drive to um, and depth uh, in Canada for sure so uh, let's go guys
Well, we've been in Tuk Toyuk Tuk now for about half an hour, 45 minutes maybe. Um, we've been down to the sign as you've seen, uh, did a little a little bit of filming around down there. We, are, we went up and tried to find Grandma's Kitchen and we also are looking for the um, visitor center, neither of which have any signs or any directions or whatever on uh, Google. So I guess we don't get to eat at, eat at Grandma's or uh, get to use the visitor center to find out where we can get in the water. Uh, it is also really frozen almost all the way to the shore still. So. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to be getting in the water unless things change. But we did find this really cool boat behind us. Um, the Google Maps does show where Grandma's Kitchen is, um, but we drove up there and there's no signs. It didn't look like it's open yet for the season, maybe. And it also did show where the visitor center again, but no signs, no phone number, and uh, no signs of life there. So I guess they're just not open up yet. It's June 6th, 2024. Uh, we figured they'd be open uh, already. The, the um, ferries have been open for three or three days now, I think. So, um, but hey, we're striking out guys, but we still made it to Tuk Toyuk Tuk and the Arctic Ocean. We went into the general store and they said that um, the visitor center is not open yet and grandma's kitchen, none of the restaurants are open yet. We are here too early, y'all. They say they normally open up the second week in June. They also said um, that we cannot go in the water here. It's um, sacred ground right here at the end of the road. And the place that we could go into in the water still has ice, y'all. And they said it is not safe to walk on the ice. So we came all the way up here for a polar bear plunge and we're gonna have to save it for next time. We are also having some electrical problems. Um, we're having some random beeping, power uh, on and off, and we thought it was just the campground, but we just went in to feed the dogs and it's still happening. So we're going to make um, the quickest trip back to civilization that we can in case um, something really goes wrong and um, we'll keep you posted. In this moment. Forever be, forever be In this moment, in this moment Forever be, forever be The night fades like a whispered song It's time we made it back to Inuvik and the campground uh, office was closed. Well, they it did say open till 11 and to call this number, but a guy in front of us had already called and they said for him just to set up and then come pay in the morning. So that's what we're going to do. We got the same spot that we were in last night. We weren't planning to stay here another night. We were going to keep going, but since it's so late and uh, as you can see, he's busy over there. All of our stuff that goes in there is over here and summons in the house because we've been having that electrical issue. Um, what's been going on with the power, babe? I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it seems like the power is, the 12 volt power actually is turning on and off. It's, it's making beeping sounds inside and um, every once in a while the fan above the kitchen will turn on for a second like it'll beep and then it'll rotate the fan a couple of times and it's, I don't know, it's one of those magical um, pro pro uh, problems with electricity. 
So he took everything out of here because our system is way back in there and uh, for the batteries and everything. So he's going to go check out all of the wiring and see if anything got loose um, with all the bumps on the highway. And uh, hopefully he finds the answer and it's easy to fix. If not, <laughs> we're at least in a town that has an RV tech. I don't think they would have had one. I uh, said in when we were up in uh, Tuck that we needed to get back to civilization. And I didn't mean that that's not civilization. It's a pretty cool little town. Yeah. But I don't think there are any RV techs. There weren't even any RV parks open yet. They were uh, still closed for the season. So I need an at least electrician here. is what I need. Yeah, we need an um, electrician. I might be calling a friend soon. We'll see. <laughs> He's going to use the phone a friend option and call our friend Cyril from uh, Thunder and Lightning Go RVing that helped us do this uh, solar. <laughs> so um, hopefully... We will have this worked out. If not, um, we have backup plans. Well, I did have to phone a friend, actually. Um, I called uh, Cyril, the guy that helped me uh, install this thing. I looked for a, uh, actually, when I went in, I found that uh, there are two rows of lights on my Victron inverter, inverter converter and uh, only one of them would come on and then it would almost immediately go to low battery and then shut itself off. Well, I tested the battery and I had 13 coming out of the battery, so I went to the Victron itself, opened it up. I tested there and I got uh, 13 there as well. So I've got good power going into that Victron. It just doesn't recognize it for whatever the reason is. So in order to be able to use park power, I had to take the, um, the wires out of the Victron and wire them together, the 110 wires. Uh, so we'll be able to use plug-ins and, and things like that uh, inside. Also, if we didn't have the rich solar panels on top, we would have no way right now to charge our 12 volt batteries. Um, due to uh, Victron's lack of customer service, I have no phone number I can call. I actually have to call the per the the company that uh, sold me the uh, the Victron, and hopefully they will uh, be able to walk me through a um, some kind of troubleshooting or whatever the process is going to be on that. I have no idea. Um, it's almost midnight here um, in in Canada, and nobody in the in the U.S. is open. I bought it. Uh, in Texas, so it's well after midnight there. I will um, send a message and uh, hopefully we will find out tomorrow um, what's going to happen with that. I do have an onboard generator that we can use and I do have the solar, like I said, the rich solar panels that will charge the 12 volt batteries. So hopefully uh, we won't go dead in the water. If we decide that we're going to boondock anywhere, we won't have anything uh, 110 power. So we won't have any um, uh, TVs or any plug-ins to charge the phones or anything like that except for our 12-volt plugs. So that's where we are with that. And it's time for me to go to bed. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of this stuff put back put my tools up, get everything back in this tray, and go in. Haven't had a good day, guys. Well, thanks to my buddy, uh, Cyril, from Thunder and Lightning Go RVing. If you don't know that channel, uh, we'll leave a link to their to them in the uh, description. And also to Todd Hansen of Big Beard Batteries. Um, I got on the phone with uh, Cyril last night and uh, he gave me a few tips and I, I went ahead and looked through some things and, uh, and was able to figure some out. And today with Todd Henson's help from Big Beard, um, I guess we got it figured out. I really, I can't tell you what I did guys. I went in there and I just tightened everything up. That's all I did. When I talked to Todd, I showed him a video. He said it looked like um, 12 volt jump or something like that. Um, and that there's there's something loose and when I got here I went under there um, last night and I tightened everything up but I, I had to take some I had to take some of the power off so I could tighten up some of the ground and um, that seemed to um, do the trick as of right now anyway we have good slide uh, working 
Uh, and we also have, um, we don't have the lights flickering and the fan coming on when we're trying to run the water anymore. On the plus side, we're, we're back up to 100% as far as I can tell right now. Um, on the negative side, I don't know. I guess I, I, there were very few things I had to tighten it all in there to make this thing work. But as Allison said earlier to me, we've been, you know, over 500 miles on gravel roads. So it probably has a lot to do with that and loosening things up and jarring stuff around. But we're back up to 100% as far as I can tell right now. And I think we're gonna get back on the road today and head into Alaska. Did y'all see that? Oh my gosh, that was so cool. <laughs> we've, we've seen a lot of bears on this trip, but that's the first absolutely 100% positive grizzly bear that we've seen. It was really cool because I saw something in the road and uh, she started to get the camera ready and I said, that might be a moose in the road, I don't know. And we got closer, it ended up being a bicycle guy. And he was, he had his camera out and he was taking pictures and then I, as we got closer then I saw what he was taking pictures of was a, was a grizzly bear so we stopped and talked to him a bit and, and uh, he said that was his first grizzly bear that he's seen too. I don't know how far he is but we're still in the Arctic guys. We're on our way back from Tuck but we're still in the Arctic. And um, yeah, so he's like, if you don't mind, I'll just ride right alongside you guys and, uh, you know, get by this bear. And we're like, yeah, no problem. So, uh, you know, after he took some pictures and we watched him for a minute, him or her, I don't know, for a, for a minute or two, uh, I started going real slow. We got all the way over to the other side of the road and uh, he actually held, held on to the to the camper like, like old school bumper hitching. I don't know if you've all <laughs> have ever done that, but... Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. He held on to the camper and we went by real slow and we got that footage y'all just saw that of that uh, grizzly bear. That was pretty cool. Yes, it was. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the end of the Dempster Highway, guys, or the beginning, depending on which way you're going. We finally made it to the end. Over a thousand miles of dirt road, minus about five or six miles all the way up there in Inuvik area. Well, what do you think? I'm very glad that we did it. Uh, it was once in a lifetime experience and that's <laughs> all I want to do it, once in a lifetime. It was beautiful. I love the town of In Inuvik. Um, the people were awesome. That little community was great. Uh, the scenery was outstanding, but that was a long bumpy ride. It sure was guys. And we noticed we've only been, uh, we only left this spot to go that direction. What, maybe four days ago, five days ago at the most. Five. Yeah. <laughs> and it is already changed so much. All the leaves are coming out already. When we first left, there were no leaves. Now the leaves are all coming out. Uh, I mean, I, I imagine you could drive this, this road, uh, four or five times a year and it would be completely different every single time guys. But I think this is where we're going to leave you on this video. You're going to want to come back next week because from here, we're going to Dawson City and into Alaska. Well, as always, guys, Semper Fi. And God bless. <laughs>